Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. In this episode, I'm gonna be talking about Polycam. Now, Polycam is an app that allows you to use your phone to 3D, to pretty much scan assets and, and objects in real world, and that will make them as a 3D object. Now, I've been using this for quite a while, and I've been slowly but surely uh, building up my library of 3D assets and scans that I've done. And so I wanna show you a little bit of that process, how to use the app and how you can bring those models into Blender to clean them up, decimate them, and, and all that stuff, so stay tuned. Okay, so before we get into the app, um, I want to talk a little bit about how scanning through the objects works, at least with the app and your phone and all that. And so I'm doing a little bit of a um, role playing here, uh, thinking that maybe this is me, right? Let's say I'm walking on a trail and I see this rock and I would like to sort of scan it. And so, uh, you know, I open my app and, and, and I'll show you all the app stuff after this, but I want to, I want to show you what to do, uh, in a, in a sort of situation like this with the app. And so imagine that me here is holding the phone pointing at the, at the, uh, at the rock here. And the main thing that I'm looking for when I'm scanning is the lighting, right? Obviously this, the subject matter, but the lighting is going to be very important because the lighting is going to be baked into the texture of the object that you scan. And so let's say for example, I'm walking and the sun, you know, is hitting this rock this way. So there's this big shadow here and this highlights and all that. Whenever I import the object into 3D, the texture here is gonna be dark, like if it was a shadow, right? And here's gonna be light and all that. So it's gonna be really baked. And it doesn't matter the lighting situation that I'm gonna put in the scene, I'm always gonna have this dark shadow here and the light and the shadow here on this side and all that. So I really won't have a lot of um, freedom with what to do with the lighting with the object. And so I always, always try to avoid harsh, hard lighting like this because it's not, it's not really um, convenient for the uh, for the uh, model. Now, if you really don't care, like if you just like the way it looks, like yeah, you can still scan it, but uh, just keep in mind that that the lighting is going to be baked into the textures. So what I'm really looking for is something more like this, right? Where the more diffuse the lighting, the better. And so that way there's not really a, um, a harsh lighting. And whenever I add a light source to the scene, so let's say I add a light. Now I can really, you know, really determine where the shadow is going to be and play with the uh, the uh, the forms of the object and the placement and, and all that stuff. So um, it's really important for me to being able to scan things with a light source that's not really harsh. Now, sometimes, most of the time, you know, this happens like really early morning or right before golden hour or sunset. And so there's really not a lot of window time for doing this during the day, unless it's a very cloudy day and there's not really like a really uh, hard sun out. And so, um, so that's that's usually the uh, the hardest part to um, to do this. Now, let's say you have the lighting. I'm gonna bring this back. A little bit here. Now, let's say your lighting is correct. You're, you know, you see the object, and you know you like it. You start. You open up your app, and what you want to do with uh, with this is you want to be able to go around the object. So, if I'm looking at it from the top, you want to be able to go around it, all the way around, right? And the way I'm taking pictures, if you see over here. Let's say this camera here, right, which is my camera here in 3D, is your actual camera, right, of your phone, right? I want to be able to take this, let me change this here real quick. I wanna be able to take the pictures first uh, as, with as much space here as possible. Now, I'm not gonna be too far because then it's gonna really scan all this stuff back here. I wanna be able to be able to do something like this, right? 
And I'm going to take a picture here, picture here, picture here, picture here, picture here, picture here. And I'm going to go all the way around. As you can see here, uh, the camera is sort of uh, moving around, right, the object. And I'm sort of taking all these pictures. And not only I'm going around the audio, but I'm also want to take pictures low. Because sometimes, for example, if I want to take a picture of the detail here, I want to be able to get low. So I'll get low like this, and then I'll go around the object, taking the picture slow, right? I'll go like in here, making sure that I get this area here and this area here, right? And also, I want to be able to get as high as possible like this, and I'll go around the object as well, right? So sometimes, you know, it takes a lot of pictures depending on what the subject matter is, but I want to make sure that I get different angles, all the angles as possible. And um, and I want to encompass as much of the object as possible as when I like to take a little bit of what's like if it's a rock, I like to take what's a, a little bit of on the ground just so I can use that ground to later blend it into my ground in my scene. And um, and then after that, then I started taking like detail pictures, like if there is a, um, you know, a crack or a detail or a carving or whatever the case may be, I'll get really close. And then I start taking the pictures of that as well. Now you can see here that this is a very, let me erase this. If I change the, uh, let's go into viewport. So this is 4K, okay, so this is the actual textures. Now uh, you will get 4K textures, but you can see here that this is a very nice detailed model here. You got a little bit of grass and ground and, the, the rock itself is pretty good. Now, this is a decimated uh, one, but um, you can see that it's, it's a pretty good, it's a pretty good um, model that you will get. Now, um, so that's that's what you normally you do. Uh, once you open the app, the app you're going to walk around there and do, and do all that stuff. Now, uh, let's go into the app and see what that looks like. Okay, so we're going to open Polycam here first. Now, as you can see here, uh, I'm here on my um, desktop, so you're going to see my keyboard and some of this stuff. But, um, you know, as I mentioned before, make sure they have those conditions met and um, in your environment so you can do better scans. But let's talk a little bit about the app uh, first, right? And so as you can see here, I'm already on... Uh, you can see on the bottom left, the auto and manual. This is on the lighter, as you can see here on the bottom left. Uh, I'm on the lighter, and this is the auto video and out, uh, manual pictures. For the manual, pretty much, and the auto, the difference is just, you just for the manual, you have to take the pictures individually by pressing the button at the bottom. Now you have lighter, which is using the lighter sensor on your phone if you have one. Right. Uh, if you don't, uh, you can use the photo version here. Uh, but also, there's this room section where you can tap and record, and then you can uh, do larger environments like a room or a house or something like that. Uh, for the most part, I go directly into photo, and I usually go into auto. And what this does is every time I move a uh, or I press the button. So let's say, for example, if I have uh, this item here and I press my record button, every time I move, you're going to see that it's taking pictures and you can see the pictures on the bottom right. It's 9, 10, and it's just taking pictures as I'm moving the camera around, right? So uh, I slowly move it around the object and it manually or automatically takes the pictures. And once you're done, you can press done or the, uh, the same button in the center here. Um, and once I'm done, I pretty much go into done here and then it takes me to this window here. Now, this is something very important because a lot of the times I am, let's say I'm on a hike or I'm walking around the city or I'm in a place where I'm just moving around and I'm scanning things. And when I know that I'm going to scan multiple objects, right? Uh, this process here, upload and process version here, uh, option here at the bottom, it, it it takes it could take quite a bit, uh, depending on how many pictures in the model. And so what I like to do is I get to this spot here and then I go on to upload later right at the bottom. And so I click that, and you're gonna see this is my library of things that I have scanned. Uh, you're gonna see that it says here at the top left draft. And so that means that it's it's in the app, but it, it hasn't really 
done the whole processing thing. And so now if I find another object as I'm walking around, I can press the, the, the plus button at the top right. And then that would take me to the same um, window here. I go to photo automatically or manual, however you want to do it. And then I scan my second object and then I repeat that process. So if I go into here and I say, okay, this is going to be my second object. I take all the pictures. I do all this and that I press here and, and then I go into done. So let me, let me take a couple here. So maybe one, two, three. So I'm just doing a couple here, just going around just so you can see the, uh, and I'm just, doing like a weird view here in my studio here, but that way you can sort of see. And so now I press done. And then again, I go to upload later. Now, usually what I do is once I get home, after I do all the scanning, right? Uh, I'm going to end up with a bunch of drafts like this. And once I'm home, I can put the, the cell phone on the side and just let it work. So I'll go to the model here. Uh, usually I do medium or full, depending on the model. And then I do upload and process. And this that's a, that's the a thing that takes the longest. And so uh, I go there, I leave my phone somewhere, I keep doing all the things. And then I, I, I do that with all the models that I scan. And once it's done, you're going to get something like this. So this is, uh, let me show you an example here. So this one here. So once once uh, once it's processed, you can go into here and now you can sort of check the model, right? So this is one of the models that I got a little while back. Um, and, you know, you can crop it. You can see options on the bottom here. You can crop the model. So this is to get rid of, you know, some of the extra stuff that you don't really need. So I'm tapping on the side here and instead of moving it, into a spot where, oops, make sure that you select one to a spot where it's really gonna make a little bit more sense. Just to just so you don't have extra stuff, because a lot of times it, it scans things that you really don't need. And so for this one, for example, I can just get this section here, right? And then I just do crop here. And so now it's a little bit more clean, right? And I can do a little bit more cleaning in, in Blender, but it's nice to uh, be able to cut a little bit here. And so I do this with all the models. And then once I'm done, then I go to select at the top right here. And then I select all the models that I want to export or uh, upload. And once I select them, then I go into download or export. And then this is going to give me some options. And normally, I mean, you can do this any way you want to, but you can uh, normally what I do is I export it to... Uh, um, to Blender here and let's see. And then uh, I do a Blender normally, but then afterwards, then I, I upload it into my G drive and then I download it from there. And so uh, that's how I normally get the, the OBJs from here, the app into, uh, into my computer. I upload them into G drive and, um, and I'll show you what I do after that, because what you get is going to be sort of like a zip file, which is going to get, uh, is going to have your, your textures and also your model. And that's what's gonna, what you're going to uh, normally input it into Blender, but you can use any 3D software. Now, if you really like this content, I just want to let you know that I do have a Patreon where I share a lot of more information. I share tutorials, critiques, 3D kits, everything that I do on my daily work. And so if you're interested in that, feel free to check that out. And if you would like to support me in that way, I really, really appreciate it. Now that we are here in Blender, um, this is a... Um, sort of like what you're going to get, except the Blender file, of course. Uh, but you're gonna get your OBJ, MTL, and then whatever textures the scan comes with. And so uh, I'm just gonna import this OBJ normally. And so I'm gonna go to here and then grab my direction here. And so I'm gonna import this uh, texture OBJ and then I get my model, right? And so I can... Um, I'm going to move this scale here and I'm just going to move this a little bit higher up. Now, as you can see, um, 
this, you know, what I, what I like about this 3D scan is it actually brings the objects, whatever you scan, to actual scale in the world. So this is like a six foot sort of scale. And so this is like the actual scale. So if you're building like an environment, you don't need to worry about scaling and resizing and all that. So uh, this is a, a really cool um, uh, thing that, that the app does. And a lot of times, you know, these models will come sort of like, like, sideways or some sort of rotation. So normally what I like to do is to sort of try to mash them as much as I can to, uh, you know, to make them straight. And so, uh, and this is a very simple one. Um, but once I do that, then I go into cleaning mode. And what I do is uh, I go into edit mode. And this is a very easy one to uh, to clean up. So uh, it's not going to really require much. But, you know, this stuff here I'm going to delete. And uh, one thing that I'm going to do is if I go to vertices and I press A to select everything, right-click, merge by distance, you're going to see down here that I remove almost 3,000 vertices. And uh, the app does this thing where a lot of the pieces are going to not be connected. So let me, let me actually go back in here. And so you can see. So you can see here that you get all these pieces like this, sort of like a map type thing. And so all those pieces are not really connected and the same thing for the base. So I always like to go into edit mode, select everything, right click by distance. And so any overlapped pieces are going to be uh, merged, right? And so if I press I on my, I'm sorry, L on my model here, uh, I select everything that is connected. I press control I to select everything else. And then I delete that. And so now I can actually get rid of this sort of like ground here because I really don't need that. And so I'm gonna, so you can see here the actual texture in here. And so uh, let's go into, let me select my camera here real quick. Viewport display, bring this black, okay. And so I'm gonna have some lighting here just so you can see the textures which are really nice actually in here. And so you're gonna see that this is getting like a weird shading uh, thing. It's, and, and this might happen on all your scans or all your models. So if you see that you go into, you select the object and you go here on the uh, uh, object data properties on their normals and then check off auto smooth. And that's gonna, it's gonna fix that. And I'm going to get rid of that ground and I'm going to use my bisect tool. So edit mode, select everything, bisect, go to my tools, fill, clear, order. I'm just going to cut this part here. And so now that I have this sort of isolated, I can select uh, this by pressing L and then control I to select anything, everything else outside of that. And then just delete that. So we need to geometry. And then I have my vase here uh, ready to be. So um, again, uh, you know, I have to do this uh, every single time I do any scanning. And what I like to do is I save this as a blend file. And that's what you see here, right? And so um, that way, anytime I need, I can just either uh, append you know, using the append or just opening this copy and paste type thing. Or I can add this to my asset browser library uh, from here. And so uh, that's gonna depend on how you have it set up. But that's usually my process on on bringing these models and um, sort of isolating them and cleaning them up. All right, guys, so that's it for today's episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know in the comment section below. If not, I will see you guys in the next video.